How's that? Hopefully that works a little bit better. I'm rolling out of another stream, so it takes a minute, but that should be good, I think. <clears throat> cool. Let's drink some rye. So we got three bottles, uh, three barrels from Natural Barrel Co. I'll try and keep these quick. So normally there is six to eight month wait for these or so I'm told. However, uh, we got into a good conversation about our bourbon. Some people are interested. Um, and Mike at Nashville Barrel Co. said, why don't you guys do one? But I'm going to need to hear from you quick, which is why I received the barrels yesterday. Um, and we're tasting them tonight. So I can give them a decision tonight. Uh, we'll see if they're good. These are the first cracks. Hey, Lane. Good to see you. Um, yeah, this would be kind of crazy. It's been a long time since I've tasted a barrel live. I'll probably do a few more of these. I got some Starlight to do. Um, what else? Um, you guys will hear it first. I think we're uh, we're going to get a little Four Roses. That should be fun. Four Roses is pretty big for the sub. Got some High West coming in. Oh, and cool. Everyone would be blowing up my phone here, but... Yeah, let's talk. So this is an eight-year MGP rye barrel proof source from MGP by National Barrel Co. Um, it's been hanging out. They're finishing the aging in their warehouse. I'm kind of getting said here after a, a fun night of, uh, of weekly whiskey. But let's, uh, let's taste some whiskey. If you guys have questions at any point, too, feel free to just drop them in the chat. Um, the smooth ambler is moving, so hopefully we can avoid those. There's great length of questions on our bourbon about those tonight yeah i've been uh considering some driftless glen i think blake and i'll probably get up there in the next couple of months they've been pretty busy i just picked up their port finished bourbon which is really pretty good i picked up their uh barrel proof rye which is i think about five years now which is really really impressive it's not as good as the jack daniels um great question it's not as good as the jack daniels barrel proof but I'm not sure I super expect that chat here. Um, let's see. Cool. So I'll take the report. John was going to join me. We uh, we just wrapped up with a fun bird bird dog guy. Um, he was pretty chatty. So we might see John. We might not. But yeah. Let's talk whiskey. So this is National Barrel Co. I have all three of these are eight years. One of them is 109 proof. The other two are, let's see, the other two are 110 proof. So pretty, pretty modest, pretty hefty for the age. They're not like, uh, they're not going to come out hazmat. They're going to come out 99 bucks a bottle, which I, I think works out pretty well. Let's see, get these glasses going. Yeah, I'll do some more remote like this. It's kind of fun. I usually don't get to see you all, but let's talk about some whiskey. So barrel 39, barrel 29, barrel 33. Not that that means a whole ton to us. Yes, yeah, so they buy it aged, aged from MGP, and then they finish it off in Tennessee, which isn't so bad. Um, the climates are extremely similar. They have very similar ricking, maybe a little bit more, but it shouldn't be too bad. The uh, it, It's not like a smoke wagon ages them for much longer on premises. This is kind of just, they buy them and wait for them to get bottled. Um, yeah, those 15 year, <laughs> the 15 year whistle pigs are, are fucking insane value. And we're kind of seeing the decline. I don't think we're going to get it too many more of that age. Certainly none of the 17s. Um, tasting the first sample here. I've deliberately kind of been light. I had one pour of barrel dovetail during our stream earlier, just kind of warming up. Nothing too crazy. This is it. 61%, so a little bit higher than these, but it hasn't been a you know a big night of reviews or anything by any stretch. So let's dive into it. I think I'll probably try and keep this too bad a half an hour unless we need more time. I'll take questions. This is MGP Rye again, so I, I expect that there'll be... Yeah, I've been drinking a lot of Alberta Rye lately, but doing a lot of selections from some other places with other sources. But this is the eight year, 110 proof barrel 39. Yeah, I would have to assume the same. It's 95% if I had to guess. 
I like doing these as kind of blind as I can. They put a lot of info on the samples, so it's kind of hard to be like truly blind, but wow. Okay. So I should have, uh, I should have bribed one of you guys to take notes for this. That would have been, would have been really handy, but I'll watch back and I'll write them down. So sample one, really bright on the nose. I say bright in like a fruity, that's fruity, it's effervescent, there's pine. There is some of that MGP spice, clove, not a lot of dill. I wouldn't say any dill at all, maybe lightly minty. There's a little bit of pepper on the nose, so it's pretty fruit forward, it's pretty spice forward. There's a tiny bit of that spearmint quality to it. The, uh, let's see. The proof is, is is a little bit on the low side from the nose, so it, it definitely doesn't hit you hot. Um, it's definitely not like a like a really powerful punishing rye on the nose. Sample two. Sample two seems to have a little bit more brown sugar here. This one's a little woodier too. This is barrel twenty nine. It's actually one proof point lower, one hundred nine proof. It's a little bit woodier, a little more pepper, a little more clove, actually some tobacco. A little bit of orange peel, which is kind of nice. So it, it, it is very different from the first sample here. But it's nice. There is a little bit of that mintiness to it, a little bit of that MGP. I won't say spearmint dill because that I noticed is much lower proof stuff like the old Smooth Ambler seven years. Um, this doesn't remind me of Alberta, which is kind of cakey. Kind of toffee forward, kind of orange peel. Nice pepper, nice tobacco, like really musty tobacco. Reminds me kind of one of those, like uh, if anyone's had the old wild turkey Christmas rye, kind of that musty, funky rye character. You'd think it was a lot older than eight years, but it's not. Let's see. I'm on the nose for sample three. This one's interesting. This is uh, this is probably the spiciest of the three. It reminds me of gumdrops. It reminds me of spearmint. It reminds me of uh, like pine and cedar. Maybe a light bubble gum. It's really, really fascinating. Okay, so working through the nose. This one's really interesting. I haven't had many mini rye that remind me of bubble gum, which is kind of fascinating. There's some bourbons, you know, you get that ice wine, acetate, some of those other flavors, some of those funky kind of esters, but this one does remind me a lot of brown sugar and bubble gum, which is kind of an interesting combination. I don't know if it's my favorite, but we'll come back to it. Switching back, I probably should have zoomed this out a little bit. It'd be easier to like, to kind of like prop these up, but um, back to sample one, we'll go through the palette a little bit. Hmm. Okay. So the proof is definitely there. This reminds me a lot of an Alberta rye. Orange jam, really rich on the palate. Really, really rich despite the lower proof. Uh, pepper, orange peel, a light spearmint, a little bit of brown butter, some caramel. It's, uh, I won't say it's hot, but like, you know, you know, the proof is a little bit up, which is kind of nice. Like, this is not going to fool you as some baby sass six year 90 proof rye. That's really nice. This is a, <laughs> yeah, great comment from Lane, the, the high ester rum reunion. Oh, look, look who's joining me. Hey, John. Hello, my friend. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. Oh, I see. We went with the, uh, mellow. <laughs> background or the maze monday background dude switch it up so so john and i for context we wrapped up weekly whiskey um and it was 8 59 my time and i was like shit dude like i need a drink and i need to use the bathroom and i need to be back here in 45 seconds so I a lot of things to do in a little time yeah I might, I might switch up the brand a little bit let's see what we got here but um john is gonna help me out here let's see we got uh, yeah I, I can handle production for you while you do your tasting here uh that's the agave yeah agave doesn't fit why don't you hit it you're you're in the broadcast studio right all right 
you get your stuff bored, you want to go through that. And uh, have you started tasting yet? Yes, Sorry for I have. Diving in late and like stealing the show here. Dude, it is good. So I have all three samples poured. Um, I've gone through the background. We hit the nose. I just started tasting on a little bit of sample one, which I like. Let's go with it. I'll put on the, the New Year's theme just to sort of give us a mellow backdrop here. How's that? Okay. Okay. We'll get those badges up. We should be good to go. Yeah, I got you. Let's I got see. you. This will be good. I, I was saying I need someone to be like a note taker. I need someone to like pull my brain a little bit. Yeah, see, what I was thinking I could do for you is as you go through these, I can kind of, I mean, Sherpa you through your selection journey uh, via the chat. How does that sound? Dude, you need you need to make that Instagram right now. You need to be the bourbon Sherpa. Uh, I think that exists already. You Doesn't? know who is? It's uh, Eric Carrico, I think, has that. The, uh, he's like a Airbnb monster. He's got like oh. all the best shit going for Airbnbs uh, around the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Son agave a... background. We can't do the agave background right now. Um, I'm just going to get a little whistle missile here. Yeah, the bourbon sugar. So you're drinking one of the previous R bourbon picks, the whistle missile, right? Correct. That was the... the whistle missile. Can't Fuck. go wrong with the whistle missile. That was so good. No, I'm going to put that back up on display here. I like it. Okay. okay. So you're on a sample one of three? Yeah. So I, I went through the noses a little bit. I was actually pretty surprised. There's a lot of diversity here. Um, sample one was a little bit on the minty herbal orangey side. Sample okay. two was like really brown sugar heavy, really brown butter, toffee, like tobacco, old, musty, dusty. Um, and three was funky and strange. It was like a orange peel, bubble gum, and like toffee, which oh, is like kind of especially for MGP. Um, right. So like we're going three totally different directions, at least on the nose. Yeah. Okay. Um, going so i started tasting one for the the proof on each of these is either 110 or 109 so there's two samples one and three are 110 proof sample two is 109 proof so they're not wildly different they're not super high but the mouthfeel on one was like so incredibly rich with a okay. lot of uh a lot man, of nice that's what gets me with mgp stuff man you can get some of those with the mouthfeel that dials it up to 11 and it changes everything about the experience too because then that finish just sticks Mm -hmm. yeah and that's exactly what this is like it's uh it's kind of the difference between having like froyo and like custard like custard is yeah. just like like so... a homemade rich yes 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 i'm with you um so i'm really curious to try number two because on the nose two reminded me of some recent vintages of thomas handy which is kind of kind of strange but i haven't had mgp that's so cakey and brown sugary and like mm -hmm. tobacco i kind of i don't know if you've had wild turkey kentucky or uh christmas rye like that old dusty rye release mm. oh boy that's so good um really like did you even mention that in the same sentence makes me really want to pressure you but I, I, i'll remain uh as neutral as i can here so you'd say uh, i mean of what you're going through now on number two you'd call this one the richest maybe I would say the richest in like a traditional dusty Doctor dessert way. direction. Okay. Like two is pure dessert. One is kind of a blend of like herbal and spice. And three is really fruity and like it's weird. It, I, yeah, the bubble gum is weird. The bubble gum is really strange to me. Okay. Um, so let's see. I have two, which comes from barrel uh, 29 which should mean just about nothing to anybody I would expect. Means sweet fuck all to the rest <laughs> of us. <Yeah. laughs> all right, so two. That nose persists really well, um, which is nice. And these are all 95.5 uh, mash bills? Yes. yes. And they're all minimum eight year, correct? Yep, every single one is at least eight years. 95.5 MGP source. They're all roughly 109, 110, you said? Yeah. One of them is uh, 109 proof. The other two are 110. So pretty. Okay. I'm just going to call them 55%. Yeah, pretty homogenous. Pretty homogenous. Okay. Let's see. So this is sample two go on the. Go ahead. Going into two. Okay. Going into two. Man. Hmm.
Okay, so this one is, uh, number two is a little bit lighter on the palate, not less rich, but the ethanol is a little bit more masked. Like, it's still very rich. It's very chewy, very viscous. It doesn't hit the back of your back of your tongue. It doesn't hit the side of your cheeks with that big tingle, okay. which is kind of nice. Um, there's a plum note. There's a raisin bread. There's an old tobacco. There's a little bit of pepper. This one doesn't have any of that MGP. Are you one of those spearmint dill from MGP flavor note guys? I am not. No. I mean, sometimes I catch the mint, but I don't usually read it as dill. Okay. Or I know like dilly, as the kids say. There's there's like a big like either it's kind of like cilantro, it's kind of like dill, it's kind of like spearmint. Mm -hmm. Um like this that herbal green. Yeah. This this reminds me uh, you remember when we did that segment, we did it with uh, Dank, Dan K, and he had yep. that like s'more syrup for cocktails that like give you that really viscous, really like punchy, brown mm. sugary, old fashioned. This reminds me of like a really well made old fashioned without the orange though. Okay. Kind of some cherry. Interesting. Darker fruits overall. Yeah, this one's like dark, musty, desserty, savory, which is uh. It's kind of kind of my alley, not gonna lie. I'm glad you said that because it's absolutely on my alley. Mm -hmm. Especially after the um, the whistle missile, which is kind of like pancake syrup and like herbal, like that one's kind of peppery. Yeah, it's it's got a little bit of uh, good pepper in the background on that. There's like a, right up front is that like a whole wave of fruit. But then you're right, it does have that whole pancake syrup type of thing going on on the background, which I think is why I really dig it, because it's just like you kind of get to go between <clears throat> sweet and spicy and then hang out. In, I mean, obviously, it's got a ton of age on it, too. So you get some of that barrel character. You get some of the richness. Boy, that was a terrible noise. Oh, Sorry. that was uh, that was aggressive. <laughs> it's just our soundboard. We've got uh, chickens on the soundboard tonight. We've got the upland grouse. It turns out you got to oil the mic, the mic arm sometimes. Yep, you got to spray it with uh, weasel piss. <laughs> Fucking, <A>. uh, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to think about going into sample three. Um, hey. But on that note, yeah, sample three. So this was the like the funkiest on the nose. It's like bubble gum and orange peel. It's a weird profile. That's I don't not weird. like it, but it's it's like incredibly unique. Okay, so on the nose, we are going with number three here is a funky sort of strange orange peel bubble gum type of vibe on the nose. Um, curious first on the mouth feel and where you land with that. And then let's yeah. dive into some of the palate notes. Okay, so three is hot. Um, three is really hot. Um, it's not punishing. But unlike sample one, which had a nice tingle to it, like kind of like that tells you, hey, there's some ethanol here, but don't worry about it. Sample two was really restrained in ethanol. Three is is hot. It's hot on the back of your throat. It's hot in your tongue. The in bubble the gum. Or... No, I'd say I'd, all three of these have been pretty rich on the palate. Two is the okay. richest by far so far. But like three is not thin. It has some nice syrupy quality to it. It kind of it kind of rests on the palate. But there's that bubblegum, orange peel, kind of like a lemon. Like this one is extremely fruity in a fun way. But very, I don't know. It'd be hard to peg this as rye until you get to the finish. Like the finish really cements that this is rye. It's kind of all over okay. the place in the palate. Does it come through with spice on the end there? Or is it just like an evident rye profile? No, no. It comes through with brown sugar, clove, a little bit of pecan, a little bit of okay. pepper on like right in like right in the back of your throat like immediately it, it's very pronounced okay which is that, good. that 95 really kind of showing off there at the end it's it's by far the punchiest so far and and maybe it's just because like maybe there's a little bit of selection bias a little bit of contrast from the palate because yeah, the palate's so fruity but then the 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 back palate and the finish are like really punchy spicy it's okay. interesting it's, it's kind of disjointed but I'm looking this forward to kind of comparing. Have to be bad, right? Yeah. Let's go with a new background here. Oh, okay. It is kind of nice, though. Sometimes I worry that, you know, places were going to give you three incredibly similar barrels. 
you know, and they're kind of like picking, picking straws or kind of grasping for differences, but really differently. Yeah. That, yeah, it reminds me of the, the, uh, the Christmas rye, which I don't, like I have not had in a while. So it's like a really striking resemblance. In fact, I don't even have a bottle here. It just popped into my head. I wish I had a bottle. But well, if that's what jumped into your head when you're sipping that, though, I think it's it's a good sign. Good, yeah, great sign. All right, so I'm back to sample one. This is okay. eight year, 110 proof barrel, 39. Sample one, how are you now? Like Murray, how are you now? Good you? Not so bad. Hmm. What are you using for glassware tonight, by the way? You were using uh, the Red L's? These are the Louis oh, the Sneeze Noise. One. I okay. don't recall. I'll, I'll find the link. They're uh, admittedly my Rydell performance are dirty, and I couldn't find Glen Cairns that weren't branded. Okay. And it felt kind of dirty to like drink natural barrel cut out of like a rabbit hole or a Jack Daniels or a Woodford, Glen Karen. Fair. Fair enough. I just wanted to know, uh, just for reference. Yeah, I'll find you. I'll find the link. I'll post it when I post the notes. But I really like these. It's kind of just like a Glen Karen with a little stem, but they are heavy. They have a, like a nice, nice swirl to them. They're pretty cheap, too. I think it was maybe 30, 40 bucks for six of them. So pretty well priced. Oh, yeah, that's really well priced. And they're solid. I dropped one or two already, and they just bounced right back up. Bouncy glasses. You heard it here first, people. <laughs> it's like a Robin Williams flubber. But in the glass These department. glasses bounce. <laughs> I got to get a soundboard for shit like this. Yeah, you got to get one of those little ad lib. All right, so the finish on one. Finish kind of rebounded a little bit. There's a lot of pine, a lot of brown sugar, a lot of toffee. A lot of clove, which is nice. It kind of rains in that herbal element. It uh, It's pretty savory. It starts more floral. It starts a little more spicy. starts a little more of that funky MGP kind of spearminty herbal notes, but it ends really nicely to a dessert finish, which is good. That uh, I wasn't super into it on the nose, but it, it's really kind of clawing its way back. There's a lot, of, okay. a lot of good character here. It sounded to me from your initial notes to be... The most on profile 95.5 eight year MGP. Yes, this absolutely. I don't know if you've had any of the old smooth Ambler old scout, like the eight, nine, 10 year, like gift shop rise or their single barrel, barrel proof rise. I don't think I have. This reminds me a lot of like a very, very classic MGP profile, which okay. isn't bad. Um, no, totally not. It's it, I won't say it's safe, but it's familiar. All right. Um, so I'll move on to two here. This is back to two. I'll be curious too. I, I'll probably so I have to get a decision in probably by tonight or first thing in the morning, but I'll send you a little bit of each of these and we'll see if you think I'm crazy or not. Yep. Yeah, uh reblind them though so that I'm not drinking them as one, two, three, right? I'll yeah, I'll, I'll blind them up. Okay. Which would be kind of fun. Um, totally. I mean, as I'm sitting here typing up your notes on them, it'll probably be a little bit easier for me to pick out which is which. But it'll still be cool to experience each one, right? Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. At least I'll... Uh, and I can still pick a favorite out of them. I mean, even knowing which is which or not knowing them, I could tell you which one I think uh, is my favorite even after you pick number two tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see... So number two, it's weird that we, uh, there we go. Number two, yeah. Is the holy moly branding or is that, oh no, I had to delete it. Oh man, no that would have been a good one. That would have been, I don't know if we could have used it live though, because it most certainly would have infringed upon some copyrights. Yeah, ABC would have come for us. Like Rob Riggle would have showed up to kick our ass. Well, that, that alone might have made it worth it really. <laughs> <laughs> Riggle is the new uh, enforcer. He comes out here and throat punches each one of us. 
live on a Tuesday night. He'd giggle and then like kick us in the shin. He would too. Wow. Okay. With his fucking golf pants. God, he's. You see awesome. my pants? You see my pants? <laughs> Joe, did you see my pants? If I was wearing pants, I'd get up and reenact it. But nobody, yeah, likewise, nobody's paid for that performance. No, best we don't uh, get banned from YouTube tonight. Okay, so the finish on number two is exactly not not quite what I expected, but it's very close. It's very like pound cake, cake batter, musty mm. tobacco, like a like a, not an old sherry note, but kind of like a, it's like old and dessert. It's like musty, musty old kind of oak tobacco. So kind of okay. fitting with that that uh that wild turkey Christmas rye feel, which was just like mm. a pungent fruit bread. Yeah, fruit yeah. Cake, fruit cake of a rye note. Fruit to cake me. is exactly. I almost said it, but I was like, mm, if I say it, then I'm going to be doing a little bit too much power suggestion. I'm supposed to be the Sherpa here. So I went back to Sherpa, but I'm glad you said it. Oh, I Sherpa. Was it. Most totally Sherpa. Okay. So, yeah. So two is clearly like the musty dessert of the three. I'm really okay. curious about. Totally number. Sherp typing that up now. Sherp, Sherp, Sherp. I got it. Sherping up. Just Sherpa Derpa. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. So the finish on three has calmed down a little bit. It's not quite as hot, but it's really fruity. It's like a white grape, kind of a peach, pepper. It's really herbal, like lots of spearmint, lots of... Okay, so you didn't catch that at all the first time around on three. Yeah, it's it's really developed well into being a okay. a spicy, spicy fruity. Like the bubble gum is kind of residual, but like it's still there. Um, the orange peels kind of die down a little bit. So this is like bubble gum, pepper, and spearmint are like kind of the big three notes. Okay. Um. Don't read the chat. It's interesting. Okay, so like I kind of normally like if we have like a huge panel of of samples, we'll knock one out. I think three is kind of clearly out for me here. Like three okay. isn't bad, but it's it's like really strange in a way that I don't think it really jives with what our bourbon is going to want. It's good. Like this is one that I would try in a cocktail, maybe because like. But if you can't see yourself, so like when I. Am uh, like if, if you threw the final vote to me here, the way yeah. I'm going to approach it is, do I want to have a pour of this tonight? And then tomorrow night when I go back to the bar and I'm like, what do I want? If that's the first thing in my mind, that's the one I want to choose. Like that's my barrel choice is the one that I want to have two <laughs> nights in a row. Cause yeah. I'm a variety creature. Like it, it's pretty <laughs> rare that I have more than one consecutive night of the same spirit or bottling or whatever. Like, I'm almost always switching up. And when I have something twice in a row, it's because I really like it. If I have it three times in a row, I'm, I'm probably rating that an A minus or higher. Yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at here. So I knocked out three. Um, this should be pretty straightforward, I think. I'll, I'll give each of these. Uh, so we're going to go heads up on one and two now. Yeah, heads up on one and two. So barrel 29 versus 39. One is 109 proof, one's 110. So essentially the same. I could not tell right, one you, one proof point blind if I tried, if my life was on it. I don't suppose I could either, uh, especially not in the same exact fucking distillate. Uh, yeah, maybe if they were different producers, but. So you noted earlier that there was a bit of a tingle on number one. Yeah. You didn't note that on two. You actually, you specifically said that there was a very low punch on the proof. Mm-hmm. So if we're talking about ABV punch and drinkability and then overall profile. Yeah, one's kind of hot. It's a little bit hotter than I'd like for 110 proof. Okay. Yeah, 110 proof. It has really good flavor. Like this would punch well in a cocktail because it's it's drinking hotter than I think it should for 55%. Right, um, which would, like you said, it would hold up great with some bitters, maybe a fortified wine or whatever you're going to use to build up that Manhattan. Yes, exactly. The uh, settling back on two here. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is it. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot going on. This is still that brown sugar toffee, old tobacco, nice rye, rye punch, but not too herbal. And it lands really nicely. The proof is very well behaved. It's very dialed in. I think this is a great rye. Well, that is what we want. Unfortunately, now I have to share it with people. Hmm. Good question from um, Moz. Yeah, it kind of depends. Gotcha. It really depends on the day. I drink a lot of Moscow, so a lot of 43 to 45 to maybe 47% stuff. Oh, some of those are so good, though. You couldn't, I mean, I couldn't tell you the difference between a 40 a 40 percent to a 48 percent of scale i don't think just because it's like the flavor, so flavor variant yeah is just so crazy and even things like the mcgays like um uh, like eric or, or like americano and stuff have just so much flavor because like we're used to ethanol being the flavor delivery mechanism in most whiskey but some of those mezcals are just so pungent so i'd say it really depends like the other night i knew sitting down the only thing i wanted to drink was larceny barrel proof and like that's exactly what happened. And some other nights, you know, I wanted to drink Ryu Espadine, which is forty percent and totally delicious. So it uh, I think it kind of depends on what whiskey I'm targeting, but there's there's really no guarantee. And one of the things I do like about Mescal is that like it is much lower proof. I can have five really small pours of five different things and compare them, um, and I can still see afterwards. That doesn't really happen with things like you know five editions of Elijah Kirk or like Barrel Proof or True. Stag Jr. Like maybe two or Yikes. three, but things yeah. get blurry. Get your face ripped off. But yeah, I think that uh I think the two here, you know, without too much ado, is really the the good choice. This is it's rye, like it's very clearly rye, but it has some really nice old toffee, dusty, funky tobacco notes. And like I love that tobacco note in a rye, especially in a bourbon. It's a, I think it's a, it's going to be a good buy for eight years and 99 bucks. Cool. Yum. Yeah, I'm going to just drink more of two here. Uh, well, we'll give it about another 10 minutes or so and we'll wrap up, do a little Q&A. But yeah, I think two is two is definitely the pick. I'll pass this on tonight. This is a uh, eight year, oop, uh, 109 proof barrel 29. It's going to be our bourbons selection from nashville barrel co and mgp source rye this will be well it'll be the second rye it'll be uh the second well first american rye second rye of the program i typically i typically don't look for like off profile like i know it's very hot right now i think it's fun to pick the bourbon or rye that i want to drink the most and if it's off profile and i want to drink it the most i think that's great but I do know people who have like gone to places and picked like the funkiest, strangest, most off profile. And we're like, you know, I probably would drink something else more, but like we wanted to get weird. And I, I don't think that represents our bourbon as a whole. I don't know, like if you've done much of that, John, but like I feel like like picking something unique is fun, but picking something just for being the most off profile doesn't really do it for me. I like I want to pick yeah. something that people are like jazzed about and if it's off profile right. and delicious great but if it's off profile and strange kind of like this number three i don't think it's a great fit yeah actually some of the worst picks i've ever had have been things where they intentionally shoot for something that's very off and it's like yep yeah, that does not taste like old weller antique you're right <laughs> and it's a damn shame you bought the whole barrel of it <laughs> I've had okay. those before and they can be just terrible. I mean, if you want to get something that's a little bit crazy, I think you could do a lot of damage in the barrel portfolio. I mean, barrel has like damn near anything you can imagine to finish a whiskey in. So if you want something that's like off a profile, like if you want a bourbon that's weird or a rum or an American whiskey, like whatever it is, you could get something that's going to be totally shifted into a different lane without being like holy shit this is like kind of gross that's a really good point like barrel is doing 
wild stuff and none of it's bad. Like they're not doing weird and wild to be weird and wild. They're doing weird and wild because they like think it might work. And like it usually does like even the, the like those Riesling ones we had. Oh, man, those were, totally blew me away. Like who's doing Riesling finished bourbon? But it worked. Like, not the most amazing whiskey I've had, but like I was like, oh, yeah, OK, that sounds a little bit weird. So I'll, it sounds cool. And I opened the cabin and I took one smell of one of those and I was like, I better try that first. That smells pretty cool. And then comparing the two of them together, I actually, I don't need to do it again. They're just like a totally different experience in whiskey. And every now and then, like you just run into stuff like that, like dovetail, like a total eye opener. Like, I don't know. That sounds kind of weird. It's like a rum finish. It's also, there you go. It's like three different finishes all together. It's kind of crazy. And then you have a sip of it and it changes your, like, you know, you just shift into a different lane instantly. Sure. Sometimes that stuff's great. But when you're selecting a single barrel of 95.5 rye, probably not the time for it. Yeah. I think that this, uh, this is hands down for me. One would have been a great backup. Uh, we'll probably take another barrel from them at some point, but number two is, is the one, um, Obviously. Number two is the one for me. That's yeah. It's on, on your notes alone. I would say two is where it's at. Yeah, and I think I, I saw a couple of people in the chat that were like two question mark. Mm. But okay, two it is. This is uh, I'll get this passed over. We'll see. I don't know what the bottling schedule was like, so it could be soon, could be not so soon. But the Elijah Craig is currently being sold. The first 252 lottery members were selected. When those run out, did you say will... 252? Dude, those barrels. That's a serious barrel. Wow. Eight eight and a half years. It's not. It's not going too crazy. It should be. Yeah. I guess not. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, even New Riff is kind of going crazy, but uh, yeah, it was V3, so it was lower to the ground, a little bit less, mm -hmm. less uh, evap. So those are running through smooth ambler are finally being delivered. Thank God I'm waiting, you know, with the W last name, I'll probably get mine last, but that's how it should be. And I think there isn't too much other barrel news that we didn't cover in weekly whiskey, but we have, I think we're, I'm sitting at 33 barrels for this year right now planned. So pretty big uptick and we'll see and if we can get before I like start putting the screwdriver to him and be like, we need three more. We need four more. That That's before we show up and go, well, two of these were really good. So mm -hmm. let me take two of these. Kind of like we did with Russell's. Okay, no los dos, man. Yeah, kind of like we did with Smooth Ambler. I expect mm -hmm. it to happen. We'll be over 40. But and yeah, Russell's. so Elijah Craig, look, probably end of this week, maybe early next week for the overflow. I'm going to get this guy ratcheted in. I think they move pretty quick. So it could be a lot of right early because our whistle pig went super quick too. Like that thing happened right away. And yeah, 33 is kind of a few. Hopefully we'll get to 40. I don't think we need to get married to a number just now. I mean, 33 might be the comfortable one or we might accidentally buy 53. You never know. Yeah. The key is, uh, yeah, mostly I'd like to get to a point where most people get access and we're getting pretty close. I know a couple of people have gotten two, a couple of people have gotten none, but we'll figure it out as we go. That's kind of how it goes. I dig it. So cool. Well, John, I can't thank you enough for stepping in, being my scribe and or producer. This has been awesome. To sum up things, we did pick. Let's see. Where did it go? Uh -huh. Barrel 29. Yep. Barrel 29 from National Barrel Co. It's an eight-year MGP rye at 109 proof. And quite frankly, it's fantastic. So I'm looking forward to people getting access to this. This should yield just under 200 bottles, which is very healthy again which is great so lots of people should get an opportunity um our whistle pig was pretty low yield but aiming for some high yield stuff coming forward and we'll uh we'll get some good uh good whiskey in your pause guys thanks for joining us thank you again uh we'll do it another couple i plan to live taste as many as possible but in the meantime check out weekly whiskey for some of the fun stuff we have going on and john it's been a pleasure thanks man absolutely brother good job selecting uh what was obviously the best choice tonight Damn, I can't wait to go drink all but what I plan to send you from this because <laughs> oh, yeah, you should you should probably get some of those going, dude. You're probably bored of rye. No, uh, you know. Well, you know, I'll get some Aracuan or them. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in.
appreciate it. We'll see you guys uh, Thursday for the after hours drop. Yeah. Cheers.